story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Good afternoon, Court TV News on the hour. I'm Tolu or Jeumi. The Adama State House of Assembly has impeached Governor Motalan Yako. The development follows the receipt of the report of the seven man investigative panel set up by the former acting chief judge of the state, Ambrose Mamadi, to investigate allegations of gross misconduct against him and his deputy, Balangilari. Against this backdrop, Angelari, who is a member of the PDP, has resigned his position as deputy governor of the state. The drama that culminated in the impeachment of Iago had for weeks attracted attention to the state as the old PDP member House of Assembly made ceaseless efforts to serve him notice of impeachment before the constitution of the seven-man pro panel. Meanwhile, Speaker of the Adama State House of Assembly, Hamadu Umaru, has been sworn in as acting governor of the state uh, for the next three months. This followed the sacking of former governor, Muntalan Yako, who was indicted for gross financial misconduct. The acting governor was sworn in by the acting chief judge of the state, Ambrose Mamadi, at the ceremony that took place at the executive council chamber of the government house. In his inaugural speech, the acting governor saluted the courage of the state legislators and urged residents to refrain from acts capable of breaching public peace. Omar first ruled the state for two weeks in acting capacity in January 2012 when the Supreme Court sacked in Yako. Before, the task before this government is animals given the level of decay Adam said I witnessed in the past several years. It is regrettable that the shameless plundering of the state by the so-called leaders was far greater in scale than the destruction unleashed on the region by insurgents. And almost as soon as news about Nyako's impeachment filtered out, his private residence in Abuja has been witnessing a lot of movements. His aides confirmed that they had been receiving visitors but would not comment on their mission. Policemen who were visible outside the Asokoro home of the impeached governor also disappeared soon after the impeachment was announced. It is not clear whether Yako is inside the high ward residence, but this is where he had been holed up since the impeachment saga began. Now, one of the leaders of the All Progressive Congress, Bukalan Saraki, has described the impeachment of Yako as an assault on democracy. The former Kwara State Governor, who is currently a member of the Senate, told journalists in Abuja that the stability of Nigeria's democracy is at stake. In the meantime, suspected co-mastermind of the Nyaya bombing has been extradited to Nigeria from Sudan. British-born Amin Oguche was flown into the country in a presidential jet and accompanied by Nigerian members of Interpol. The bomb suspect looked subdued as he walked down the plane between two operatives with his hands cuffed. Oguche, who was previously in the Nigerian army, fled to Sudan shortly after the bomb attack on a bus terminal in April but was arrested within days. Nigerian authorities are glad that the terror suspect is now back to answer for his alleged crimes. This is also evident that the armed forces of Nigeria and security services and all agencies are working hard to put this thing behind us as a nation. And so therefore it is time for all of us to come together stand with our people, stand with our government, stand with our armed forces and the security services so that we can build a peaceful, united, progressive and prosperous country once again. Police detectives have arrested a suspected senior member of Boko Haram while fleeing counterinsurgency operation at Bombo Forest in Bochi State. Police spokesman Frank Amba said in a statement that 30 year old Mohammed Zakari is a self styled chief butcher at the insurgent camp in the forest. 
He is said to be responsible for the recent slaughter of seven people, including women and children. Mba added that preliminary investigation revealed that a suspect was trained in the art of insurgency at Gombe Forest by a fleeing insurgent, Juan Abatoire, before he moved to Obama Forest about three months ago. The police say he actively participated in the April attack against customs officers at Carry Town along Meduguri Road in Bochi State. Now back to Lagos, chairman of Amu Ward of the local government area of Lagos State, Awadili Adewale, has issued a civil assault message to the Lagos State government on the activities of a group known as Vigilante Vanguard. This is coming against what the community describes as several attacks on its residents by the group. Rashidat Balogun visited the community. She brought back the support presented from our studio. While issuing the Save Our Soul plea to the Lagos State Government, Ayo Dili Adiwali says the Vigilante Vanguard has launched several unprovoked attacks on people within the council. He called on the State Governor to come to the aid of the people and save their lives and property. I have written to the CP, I have written to the AIG, I have written to the IG, and I have written to the Police Service Commission. I have written letter to the Governor, I have written to the House of Assembly, I have also notified the SSS. Jola Ogunlusi, Chairman Community Development Committee, Amu World of in Local Government, says the police have not been cooperative, calling for a change to ensure peace and sanity for residents. So I hope the authority, up to the president, we know that things are not well here. The FHA will come into it and look, Minister of uh, Employment to know this, that things are not well here. Some victims of the latest attack say the attack has swooped on them as they made to plant trees at a designated spot in compliance with the Lagos State Government's Clean to Green campaign. Or the bike. So I just saw a lot of guys flinging bottles with gunshots all over everywhere. And now they stopped everybody. I, was, I saw some people, about 10, I mean 100 people. 100 sort of boys with, with full weapons, guns, bottles, with all sort of weapons. And what is all this? I don't even know. I don't even know what really happened. What I just had on my head, flinging of bottles. A lot of people coming out in a mass with different kind of, I mean, machetes, arms, charm, and different kind of everything like that coming to us. You can look at my face here. I was injured, it's not because of the grace of God that I judge a little bit, it will have punctured my eye. Telltale signs of the attack is still there for all to see, but an attempt by Court TV News crew to have an audience with members of the crew met a brick wall as the team had to beat a hasty retreat in the face of an impending attack. Parents of the abducted Chiba girls on Tuesday failed to show up for a meeting with President Goodluck Jonathan. Five of the girls who escaped from Boko Haram camp also did not keep their appointment with the president. This was in spite of earlier assurances they gave the Pakistani activist Malala Yousafzai after her interaction with the president. Presidential aide Doyo Kupo told State House correspondents that a bring back all girls movement sabotaged the appointment. Manala was actually threatening that she will not leave unless they agree, or that even that you know she, if they do not agree, she will you know dissociate herself from you know from uh, bring back our girls. This is an indication that there's a face-off between the federal government and the bring back our girls campaign. It's not, it's not a face-off. It's not a face-off. It is a revelation of the, you know what we have always been saying that you know there is more than meets, meets the eye in this our local branch of Bring Back Our Girls, that the real, cons you know, it is, it is actually some form of hypocrisy, that their real concern is to play politics, present the president in a bad way, you know, in, for political reasons. They are not interested in dialogue, as you can see. This, 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 these folks are interested in playing a political trump card. Everything is geared towards 2015. The whole idea is that Jonathan is unstoppable, and, you know, all you need to do is to find a way to wipe off enough sentiments to ensure that he does not present himself or he cannot be presented for an election. Peter.
Members of the House of Representatives on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have endorsed President Goodluck Jonathan for a second term in office. Speaker Aminita Ambuwa was, however, absent at the meeting that began at about 9 on Monday night at the presidential villa and ended before midnight. He was also not part of a strategy meeting of the PDP leaders that ended in the early hours of Tuesday morning. The report. Members of the People's Democratic Party caucus in the House of Representatives arriving for a meeting with President Jonathan. They were led to the meeting by Deputy Speaker Emeka Ehedioha in the absence of Speaker Tambua. State governors elected under the party's platform also turned up for a separate session. But the lawmakers were the first to be hosted by Jonathan with Vice President Nama Sambo and party chairman Adamu Muazu also in attendance. At the end, House leader gave an insight into the closed session. The purpose of today's meeting was to continue to deliberate on issues affecting our party, but the House caucus on our own decided to pass a vote of confidence on Mr. President and also to endorse him for a second term in office. Uh, can you let us into the President's response? What was it like? We're not there. Has he accepted? Um, no, we did an endorsement <laughs> and we're urging him to run yes. for a second tenure in office. One, one we wonder why Mr. P uh, Speaker was uh, absent at this uh, crucial meeting. No, I'm sure yeah, when you see, when you see Mr. Speaker, you will ask him that question. He's an individual. So this is a PDP meeting and obviously if you ask him, he'll be able to tell you why he's not here today. Shortly after... President Jonathan and other party leaders met with governors elected on the platform. A Bom state governor described it as a strategy session ahead of 2015 elections. We want to strategize on how we can best uh, win the primaries and in, by implication also ensure that we bring out the best candidates, uh, taking a, a cue from what has happened in Ekiti State, that if we are able to do a proper internal democracy, how we bring out the most popular candidates then the elections will be re uh, less rancorous. And of course, PDP will sell through with a view to getting up to two-thirds of the states of the federation. He also spoke on the lawmaker's endorsement of President Jonathan. Uh, we are still waiting for INEC uh, guidelines. So Mr. President did not uh, give anybody any answer. He did not say, I will contest, I will not contest. He thanked them for the interest and for the confidence reposed in him. His body so language. I, think, his body he, language. I, I, I think from his body language, He's very mindful of the, of the law and the need to wait for guidelines from INEX. That was what I noticed. <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs> for now, President Jonathan has not declared his intention to seek re-election. But it's becoming increasingly clear that it will be sooner than later before he makes his intention known. United States Secretary of State John Kerry has warned of great risk of spiraling violence in Gaza and called on Arab nations to push Hamas to accept a ceasefire. Kerry says he has decided to cancel a planned trip to Egypt and return to Washington in order to give a Cairo brokered ceasefire on Gaza conflict time to work. He urged Arab nations to push the Islamist Hamas movement to accept the deal, which it has so far rejected, despite approval from Israel's cabinet. However, there are also very real gaps on other key issues. And what we are trying to do is find a way for Iran to have an exclusively peaceful nuclear program while giving the world all the assurances required to know that Iran is not seeking a nuclear weapon. What is happening there and in the potential of an even greater escalation of violence. We don't want to see that. Nobody does. Nor does Israel. But Israel has a right to defend itself. And it is important for Hamas not to be provoking and purposefully trying to play politics in order to gain greater followers for its opposition and use the innocent lives of civilians whom they hide in buildings and use as shields and put in danger. We urge all parties to support this ceasefire. And we support uh, and we ask all the members of uh, the Arab community, as they did yesterday at the Arab League meeting in Cairo, to continue to press uh, to try to get Hamas uh, to do the right thing here, which is cease the violence 
engage in a legitimate negotiation and, and protect the lives of uh, uh, people that they seem all too willing to put to risk prepared. President Obama has said this again and again, to do everything in our power to help the parties come together to work to create a climate for genuine negotiations to be able to deal with the issues that truly separate these parties. And we stand prepared to do that. I am prepared to fly back to the region tomorrow if I have to, or the next day, or the next, in order to pursue uh, the prospects if this doesn't work. But they deserve, the Egyptians deserve the time and the space to be able to try to uh, make this initiative work, and we hope it that's all. Thanks for watching. I'm Tolu or Jeremy. Good afternoon.